Do you feel like you have one leg that is shorter than the other? Or maybe you notice after prolonged periods of standing, your hips shift to one side and it looks something like this. This hip hike or lateral pelvic orientation is becoming ever more common and there's good reason for it. So in this video, you're gonna learn the mechanisms behind why this happens and what it is that you can do about it. When it comes to dealing with a hip hike or lateral pelvic tilt, there are a few important factors that we're gonna to wanna to keep in mind. Many times when we're dealing with a hip hike or we have this sensation of one leg being shorter than the other, it has to do with the orientation of our pelvis. More specifically, how our hips are rotated or potentially excessively shifted one way more so than the other. Typically when our hips bias this excess of rotation, it's gonna pull one hip up or down alongside it. And you can see this even from the standing position that I'm in here. As I am going through that pelvic rotation, you can see how one hip is getting pulled up alongside that motion. Now these biases and pelvic rotations are somewhat built into the body as we don't have a perfectly symmetrical makeup. So an important thing to keep in mind is that if you are dealing with a slight rotation, it doesn't mean you're doomed, it doesn't mean you're broken, but it may be something worthwhile looking into. And your body is an extremely intelligent system and it'll give you feedback when you do start to move into these more extreme ranges of rotation. That will typically start to showcase itself through hip tightness, potentially lower back pain, and you may even get residual pain up into the shoulders and neck. And the reason for that is the hips have such a large influence on where our structure is in space. So getting understanding of how to bring the hips to a more neutral position is gonna be something that is worthwhile. And you have to remember, our body is always looking for some sense of neutral. Because we're always interacting with the elements around us and we're having to deal with the forces of gravity, if my hips are in this more shifted position one way more so than the other, then my body is gonna accommodate around that in some way. These accommodations over time can start to create compensations and that's typically when we start to receive feedback from the body. So as best as we can, we're gonna try to look at the body from a holistic approach. That's exactly what we're gonna get into with our exercises right now. So for this first technique, you're gonna need a wall. And what we're gonna do is get into a side-lying position. Now what we're gonna make sure of with the feet to begin with is that our feet is slightly in a staggered stance. So in this case, if my left leg is on top, I'm gonna take my right foot slightly in front. And what we're gonna be primarily working on here is our left hip kind of getting drawn back slightly. What we're gonna to attempt to do is try to draw the left hip upwards via things like the hamstring glute, but also the adductor. So whatever hip you tend to have more of a drop towards, we'll say hypothetically it's my left hip, then this is gonna be the leg that you're gonna to wanna to prioritize on top. So from this position here, I'm gonna get my feet into that staggered stance. I'm really taking my right heel almost in line with my left big toe. I'm just drawing an imaginary line out from there. Now what we're gonna to start to do is first think about pressing into the wall with our left foot, and then we're gonna to start to create a draw back. So if this is where my midfoot and heel is on the left side, we're just gonna to try to draw that back this way. So as I create that draw back, I'm also gonna think about pulling my left hip back and bringing my right knee forward. As you're going through that, you'll probably feel the hips kind of get pulled to the left side in this case. We're gonna do about a five second hold here trying to sense the musculature on the back side of the left leg. And then we're just gonna reset back to neutral. So my hips start at a neutral position to begin with more or less. And then we're gonna to start to pull the hips back without kind of dumping everything back this way. So you have to be mindful that your leg on top and that knee isn't overextending, causing the hips to over rotate. We're really trying to use the musculature through that left side to work on that left hip getting pulled back. So for the second technique, you can stay exactly where you're at on the floor. You can use the same wall. And what we're gonna do is take both feet up against the wall. And we're gonna work on that same sort of principle of favoring that pelvic rotation, but we're gonna do so in a more active way. So what we're gonna do to start is take both feet up against the wall, and we're gonna get into that slight staggered stance to start with. So in this case, to make it easy for you to see, I'm gonna take my left foot in front, and this is gonna give me more of a bias into my right hip. 
So we'll say hypothetically, I favor more of a left side orientation with my hips. And this would be the direction that I wanna go because it's gonna allow me to redistribute some strength and sensation into this right side. So now that we got the feet set, what we're gonna initially start with is this tracking of the right hip back. So I'm gonna think about pulling my right hip down into the floor beneath me while I project my left knee towards the ceiling. This gives me that bias into the right hip. And then what we're gonna do is try to maintain this pelvic rotation as we slowly come up into a bridge position. Now, when we go through this and we keep this right hip back, you'll probably feel the hip that you're rotated into, you'll feel that leg work quite a bit. And that's exactly what we're gonna be looking for. Now we can build on this a little bit by just making sure that the knee is staying pointed forward and we can start to take the left leg off the wall. So now I have this bias of my hips to my right and I'm getting a ton of feedback through my right calf, hamstring and glute, and it's building that support system for my hips to understand how to work more into this right side orientation. From here, what we can do is we can start to allow the hips to come down. I can sense my hips coming back to more of a neutral position or more of a squared off position. I'll re-rotate my hips, so I drive the right hip bone down into the wall. That's gonna push my left knee up, and then I'm gonna hold that rotation as I begin to track my hips towards the ceiling. This is really gonna provide a lot of feedback through that leg and see if you can maintain that feedback through both directions. So I kind of draw sensation into it as I come up and then there's a moment where I'm somewhat trying to sustain or maintain that on the reset back down. I would work through this anywhere between eight to 10 reps and think about three to four seconds up, maybe about one second pause at the top and then three to four seconds back down. All right, so for this last technique, you can grab yourself a broomstick or dowel of sorts because you're just gonna have that for some baseline of balance. Before we get into this last one, what I want you to get used to initially is just getting used to hiking one hip because we're gonna try to build on everything that we've done up until this point, but into one fluid motion. So we'll say on my left side, I want to work on hiking that hip because that tends to be the hip that kind of drops off. We're going to think about pulling this hip up. So all I want you to do is initially just work through almost like five to eight reps where you're just kind of priming this motion of the left hip coming up. You may feel things like the obliques, potentially even the adductors work as you go through this. And really we're just trying to get this motion and this coordination kind of primed because we're gonna to start to build into it in a more dynamic way. So now that you got the basics of this down, what we're gonna do is get loaded into our right hip. So I'm just gonna step out with my left. We're gonna sit back into this right side without allowing the hips to kind of shift over in a weird way. We're just gonna think about the hip, knee and ankle more or less being in alignment for now. And then we're gonna reach out with this left leg. So I'm kind of almost in this skater stance. What I'd suggest is taking your dowel to the leg that you stepped out with. So in this case, my left. And what we're gonna begin to do is draw this left leg in as we keep this right side almost like a pillar of stability. So that's staying locked into the floor. I'm pulling the left leg in and then we're pulling the left hip up. When we do that, we're gonna to start to link muscles like the hamstring and glute fibers on this right side to the musculature around the obliques and the adductors on the left side. So we're really starting to give the body the understanding of how to initially build stability or create this pillar of stability is what I like to call it and then utilize that stability to take us through a range of motion such as a hip hike. What I would suggest doing here is first working on that loaded position, really sensing what this loaded position kind of feels like, maybe what this reach feels like with your broomstick arm as well. And then think about planting or pressing through that foot to almost draw this hip up. That hip fully gets drawn up without overextending your standing leg knee. Try to maintain some of that through the reach and then you can draw back into it. I suggest working through probably about eight to 12 reps here, focusing on the control elements and making sure that you're using musculature that is gonna to help to support the hips in that hip hike position. So as you've come to learn throughout the course of this video, the pelvis and the muscles around the hips play a major role in creating the support structure for our body to work from. What I've often found when working with clients with this hip hike or this lateral pelvic tilt orientation is their lower back and QL muscles tend to get bound up alongside that. So if this sounds familiar or like something you need, you can check a video I did on that right here.